Breaking news, a major development in the case of the disappearance of six-year-old Isabel Sellis. Her father reported her missing from their home near uh, Broadway in Craycroft back in April of 2012. Tucson Police Chief Chris Magnus is about to address the media from the West Side substation. As you can see, there is uh, still no one at the podium, but we can tell you that apparently uh, something a couple of days ago may have put this what we're about to hear into motion. Uh, we're all wondering what has happened in this case, which is five years old, of that beautiful little girl, Isabel Sellis, four feet tall when she disappeared. Um, my name is Chris we'll take Magnus. It to the press I'm the conference chief of now. the Tucson Police Department. I have with me several members of my uh, staff, including Deputy Chief uh, Chad Kazmar. Um, we've asked you all here today uh, to give you an update on an investigation that is well known not only to the Tucson community but frankly to communities across the country. In April of 2012, six-year-old Isabel Sellis went missing from her east side home. The Tucson Police Department has actively reviewed and followed up on over 2,200 leads in this case from the day that Isabel was first reported missing. Now, earlier this month, human remains were uncovered from a remote area in Pima County. A portion of those remains were sent to an out-of-state lab, it's an independent lab, for DNA analysis. And unfortunately, the results of this DNA analysis did confirm that the remains were those of Isabel Salas. Now, although this confirmation may bring some degree of closure, of course, it also ends the hope of bringing Isabel home safely to her family. The death of any child is a loss to the family and to our entire community. On behalf of our department, I would like to extend our deepest sympathies to Isabel's family. The Tucson Police Department will continue to actively pursue those responsible for any kind of involvement in Isabel's death and disappearance. We're still asking anyone with information about this incident to call 88 Crime, or you can contact the Tucson Police Department. Of course, you can always remain anonymous. Now, as I'm sure you can understand, um, I have to be very limited in terms of uh, questions and information that I can uh, respond to, but I'm willing to take a few questions at this time. Chief, can you tell us when earlier this month the remains were found? And was there any other evidence that you could gather at that location? I can't tell um, the exact date or location um, but I can tell you that the scene was obviously uh, thoroughly processed and a full investigation was done at that location. So the, the lab that we used is Bode, uh, B-O-D-E, Cellmark Forensics out of Lorton, Virginia. That's Bode Cellmark Forensics out of Lorton, Virginia. They are a nationally known and accredited uh, lab, and they have the capability of performing different kinds of DNA analysis that our lab here in Tucson, as excellent as it is, is not capable of performing. Chief, how much of the remains did you find? I can't get specific about that. Chief, what led the tip to uh, investigators that the remains were there? I'm afraid I can't go into that level of detail. Can you tell us what DNA you had to compare it to? I don't know that information, but I do know there was DNA available and an accurate comparison was made. Do you feel that finding these remains will bring you any closer to closing this case and finding out who's responsible? Well, we're, we are certainly hopeful 
of that. Um, this is a very important step in the case. Um, so that's one of the reasons, of course, why we're still asking uh, the public if they have any leads. We believe there um, may still be folks out there who perhaps know something or feel now that they're willing to come forward with information that could be helpful. So don't assume that uh, we have necessarily all the information. If people have tips, they should absolutely contact either us or 88 Crime. And what was the description you gave of the scene where you found them? Um, where? Rural Pima County. Was it in the desert? Or can you be more specific about uh, the, the area that you found these? I, I can't be more specific at this time. I'm sorry. What part of Pima County? I'm sorry. I, 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 Pima County. What, what's the of your investigators take at this point? Do you go over fresh old contacts, start talking to people all over again, uh, any of those actions? Well, this case has been actively pursued over the last five years. Um, it has been continuously worked since the date of her disappearance. So we have investigators that are still um, very engaged in this, and obviously their work continues now with this new information. I'm, I'm sorry. I, if it was a member of the police department, law enforcement, who found the remains, or was it someone else? And was it a tip that led to it? I, I'm sorry. I can't provide that level of specificity at this time. Chief, any idea how long she has been dead? I, I don't know that information. Any suspects now? Um, I can't release any information about... Have you spoken to anyone? Is anyone in custody? Um, no, I can't release information about the, the status of the investigation beyond what I've shared with you so far. Obviously, I'm sure you can appreciate it's an extremely important case to us. I don't want to provide anything that would compromise our ability to successfully solve this case. Can, can you say whether this was uh, the product of a, of a focused search or it's just a, a happenstance that they just happened to find the remains? It was not a happenstance. So it was the product of a focused search? There has been an ongoing process of many different searches, and this was not happenstance, but I can't get into any greater detail than but, that. But fair to say there was something that led investigators to that area? Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. I just can't get more detailed about how we, how we ended up at that location, but it is part of the larger investigation, yes. Isabel Salas would have been about 11 and a half years old, and five years later, here we are, and this is not what everyone was hoping for. What do you want to say to the people in your community about children, safety? She was taken from her own home. Yeah, obviously um, this is not the ending that any of us had hoped for, but this is also not the ending of the case. We are, we are working this case very aggressively, as we would with any case involving the death of a child. Um, we take cases like this extremely seriously. We appreciate the fact that this case has been very traumatic, not only for the family and friends of the family, but also for the entire larger community. And in fact, the reverberations of this have gone well beyond Tucson and even Arizona have affected people throughout the country. So, um, you know, we encourage obviously people to uh, report any missing child to us um, as quickly as possible. Um, we want people to know we take these cases very seriously and we will continue to work um, in a very dedicated manner. I really can't speak highly enough uh, of the members of my department who have persevered and worked on this case um, since the day this, uh, this child went missing. Uh, they've put a tremendous amount of work into it and I know their work will continue in the months or however long it takes in the future. How big is that team? Um, it is a substantial size team. Obviously, the size has varied uh, depending on uh, the leads to follow and the particular status of the investigation at any time, but it's a substantial number of, of officers and detectives. Yeah, I can't really put an exact number on it, but it's, it's been quite a few members of our agency. How about the toll on the Tucson Police Department investigating this now for five years? Yeah, I think it's very sad um, I, for those who have been investigating this case. Obviously, the hope of all of our detectives and the members of the department, not unlike members of the community, is that this child would be found alive in good health. 
So we see this as absolutely a tragedy, but it um, just reinforces our commitment to work our way through this entire case, and that's why I have to be a little limited in what I can share with you today. Has this discovery at all shifted the focus of Tucson police or brought any other people to light that maybe you weren't looking at before? I, I'm sorry, I can't get into that level of specificity right now. Chief, have you spoken to her parents? Um, our department has been in contact with her parents, yes. Can you tell me how they're doing? I, I, I think that they are probably the best ones to um, share their reaction. I, I wouldn't be comfortable characterizing that on their behalf. I'm sure that um, they are very emotional, but they really should be the ones to um, respond to that. Thank you very much. Uh, take care. Well, as you just heard, uh, Tucson Police Chief Chris Magnus told us Isabel's remains were found in Pima County. And they are asking the public for tips to help close this case. We'll have more information at 5, 6, and 10. You can continue to follow this case also on our Facebook page and on our website, kgun9.com.